Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 326. Prepare to embark on a journey with today's most inspiring entrepreneurs. Motivation, dedication, success. Over three dozen companies on the Inc. 500 list got their start through LegalZoom. Now that sounds like a good choice. Visit LegalZoom.com to find the service that's right for you and enter FIRE in the referral box at checkout. Our other sponsor, 99designs, is your go-to for logo, web, or merchandise designs for your brand. They will connect you to tons of talented graphic designers around the world. Visit 99designs.com slash FIRE to get $99 of services for free. That's 99designs.com slash FIRE. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Melanie Benson Strick. Melanie, are you prepared to ignite? Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right. Melanie is known as America's leading small business optimizer because she knows firsthand how to take an idea and turn it into a thriving six-figure business with her secret weapon, Leverage. With over 12 years in corporate project management, Melanie works exclusively with thought leaders and big thinking entrepreneurs who want proven strategies to monetize their big ideas and catapult their success without giving up their life. You can find her online at successconnections.com. Given Fire Nation just a little overview, Melanie, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you and then give us an overview of your business. I am known as a optimizer. And what I do is I help entrepreneurs and small business owners who are usually running at the speed of light, having a million ideas, (laughs) all kinds of distractions and possibilities coming at them like uh, there's no tomorrow and helping them figure out what's the highest pay off use of your time, your money and your energy. And a big part of what I'm doing is looking for ways to help entrepreneurs leverage and capitalize on their hard work, you know, all the things you've done to build your business to where it is today, where it is today, but really figuring out what do you need to do to optimize all of the assets you have, all of the time you're putting into it so that you're but be really able to get the littlest amount of energy in, but the most maximum output in terms of profit and results. And, you know, I've been doing this for almost 14 years now. I came out of a corporate background, which I I think most people know, but I I use that corporate background, that Fortune 500 experience that I have to really kind of integrate my more intuitive, innovative self with really hardcore, practical strategies that worked to make millions of dollars in the corporate side of things. And so I'm kind of balancing the yin and the yang, the, the logic and the intuition and creating a way in which entrepreneurs really can get the the traction that they're looking for without being so overwhelmed. And uh, I live here in Southern California, just outside of Los Angeles, which I love. I yeah, can't yeah. imagine living anywhere else except maybe Fiji. So there are some days that I wouldn't mind living on a beach in Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. You want to live on a hut over the ocean? That doesn't sound that cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I actually spent many years in San Diego, and that would be a close second. I've been times where I've been seriously Sweet. thinking about moving back down to your neck of the woods. Well, we'd welcome you with open arms, Melanie. Love to be back. Is there any place that has a beach and water and I can snorkel, I'm happy. (laughs) Well, check it out. We're going to dive way into your business and how you do everything that you do so well and the optimization and everything later on in the interview. But before we do, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire Off with a success quote, Melanie, because we really want to get that motivational ball rolling on down the hill. So take it away. Well, I've got a great one that has become a mantra of success for me. And it's how you get, how you got here will not get you to the next level of success. And many people attribute this to a very well known mentor and coach. But actually, I actually thought I originated it because (laughs) I heard this really awesome show one time. There was this wealth show that I used to watch on CNN. I don't even remember what it was called. But I heard this financial advisor to the wealthy say on this show one time that the strategies that her clients made their first million with would not be the same strategies that they would use to make multiple millions. And she said it was always this big mindset shift to get her clients to shift gears and to stop trying to 
uh, produce money the same way they were going to multiply money. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. That's the same challenge entrepreneurs have. They don't know how to switch gears from the strategies that made them successful to the strategies that will allow them to optimize their success for the future. That is such a great analogy, Melanie. It makes so much sense to me. And it's actually something I feel like I'm kind of bumping against right now because definitely had a modicum of success with Entrepreneur on Fire and I'm continuing to plug along and do the exact same things. But now how do I get through that kind of self-imposed ceiling that's there? And that's what we're going to be diving into more. So I love the quote. I love the analogy that you gave for it. And what I really want to do next, Melanie, is Put the spotlight on you because you're our spotlighted guest and we want to hear about your journey. And you weren't always this wildly successful entrepreneur. You've had your ups, sure, but you've definitely had your downs too, like we all have. So share with us a failure or massive challenge you had to overcome and what'd you learn from that? Well, I literally had to go through my list and pick one (laughs) because (laughs) I've had multiple ones. Then you are a true entrepreneur. Yes, exactly. And you know, the the definition of being an entrepreneur, I think, is being willing to look at the failures and turn turn them into success strategies or use them for our benefit. But, you know, I think one of my most significant failures happened a few years back. I, you know, again, I had several and it took me a while to get off the ground. And there was a lot of mistakes I made early on in the game just by not knowing better. But I think this failure happened because what the quote was about, you know, what got me here couldn't get me to the next level. It literally became my nemesis that I could not figure out how to get to my next level with the same strategies I was using. And I literally hit a wall where I could not get my head around how to keep moving forward. I, you know, I'd hit my seven figures and I was really happy with, with the outcome, but what it was costing me to get there became unsustainable. And two things happened. One, and, and I, and I'm really honest about this phase of my life because I think it's such a um, factor in so many entrepreneurs growth spurt is that I started to lose what was important to me and who I wanted to be as I was growing. And I lost the authentic and the connection, the authenticity piece in that way. I really, truly love connecting with people because I was scaling my growth so fast that I couldn't keep up with that connection piece. And the second thing was, and this is really important, I started making decisions that made other people happy, aka my team, my, my business partner, you know, people that I thought I was supposed to get approval from in the world at the expense of having a business that made me happy. And very quickly that became unsustainable and I, and I crashed and burned, you know, I, I kind of hit this wall in and I lost myself in my business. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a lifestyle business expert. What's happened to me? Right. And, and, you know, I was doing things to generate more success that were not necessarily who I wanted to be. And it was a really humbling, but very powerful time in my life because I lost a lot of the traction I'd worked so hard to build. And on top of that is when we hit our economic crisis, you know, the credit cards froze. And I learned that I, I didn't necessarily have a a level of a plan for how to navigate changes quickly. Things were taking way too long to change. And I think any entrepreneur, one of the things you have to look at is how nimble we are. And then I think most importantly, I really had to look at my mindset and I became somewhat of a mindset um, aficionado in the sense that I really started taking everything to the next level and looking at what was producing momentum for me, what was producing motivation, what was what was causing me to not want to be motivated and, and inspired to be in certain action, what was getting my head all messed up. And I really started to look at the level that mindset, beliefs, and conflicting agendas play into an entrepreneur's ability to rise above the challenges and the, and the obstacles and the mental junk that we all face. And so I had a huge awakening and a very powerful shift in who I was as a leader and who I was as an entrepreneur. And it really changed a lot of how I define success, how I drive myself for success, and also how I uh, was going to grow my business from that moment on. So I think it was a pivotal moment in my life. But it also – it the cool thing was is going through that failure – I created a tool and a program to teach my clients what I'd learned about money, about 
success and about belief systems and, you know, because there was a lot of mistakes I was making in how I managed my money and how I looked at sp- investing in my business and, you know, all of the things that I think entrepreneurs have to learn. But nobody knows how to do because we don't have that training in business school and we don't have this training in, in entrepreneurial school. So, Melanie, what did the bottom look like? Um, it was really, it was a dark place. It was a really dark place. It was a scary place. It was a place of feeling very alone. And, you know, one of the things that happened was I felt like, um, I felt a level of shame that wasn't a really great place to be because I felt like people were pointing fingers at me and, and saying, oh, look how she failed. And I felt like people that had been my friends forever, really, really well-known entrepreneurs and people who had their own success, they, you know, they, they, I felt like judged. And you know what's so funny is on the back end of it, kind of coming out the other side, I realized how much what I was going through was actually a blessing for other peers of mine because people start coming out of the closet and saying to me, thank you so much for being honest. Thank you so much for sharing. I actually went through the same thing, but I was too scared to tell anybody. Right. And it was almost like this veil of shame of, of uh, people who had hit these financial walls and people had lost it all and people that went upside down. It, it got lifted and, and A, there was a resource, people, somebody who – you know, someone could reach out and say, Melanie, uh, I've been going through this and I don't know how to turn things around or I need help with my beliefs. And it was like people, you know, it was like the lemons got turned into lemonade and they knew they weren't alone because someone was willing to share what was happening to them, which was me. <laughs> so that was part of it. And I think the other part of it at the very bottom, John, something really significant happened. And I realized that the greatest gift that I have, and I think we all have, is the gift of asking for support. And there were some people in my life, and I always just get a little emotional even talking about even though this has been four years now, that actually three years, I had people who stepped in and they were like, girl, you fell down, but you're not going to stay down. And they picked me up and they lifted me up. And they helped me on this journey and they never gave up on me, even when I was giving up on myself. And if those people, um, one of which I know was interviewed lately here, his name's Jim Palmer and, um, you know, my friend Adam Urbanski and several other people, they believed in me and they stepped in and they, they stood behind me and gave me their arm and said, you're not staying down. What can we do to help you get back up? And whew, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just like, (laughs) like the emotion comes up because those are the people that are the real friends and the real, you know, the real gifts in life when you have those kind of support systems. And I think every entrepreneur needs those kind of support systems. Powerful, Melanie. And you spoke of that dark place that you were in. Share with the Fire Nation now, what was that first flicker of light that you saw Mm -hmm. when you were down there? Because that's so often where we find ourselves Mm -hmm. when we do crash, when we do come down. We're in this really dark room. But then guess what? There is a flicker of light. And if we reach out to that light and really grasp onto it and nourish it to grow into a true flame, then things can happen, which you did. So what was that flicker? Okay, so I'm trying to like connect back into it. And I think it came from a conversation I was having with a friend of mine um, named Robert, who he actually does uh, for corporate clients what I do for entrepreneurial clients. But sometimes, you know, you forget your own brilliance. Like yeah. You can't really coach yourself. You can't see your forest through the trees. And he literally said to me, he's like, Melanie, what's important? And, you know, what, what, what do you value? And how can you just get back into that? value again. So one of the things that lifted me out of the fog was just focusing on the things that were going right. And I think um, this is a really common issue for many people, but especially entrepreneurs. We focus on what do I want more of and how do I get there? And when it doesn't happen fast enough, we're crushed, like our spirits melt and we go into this deep fog. And I, you know, one of the things I do with a lot of my clients is help them move through all that chaos when the priorities feel like they're overwhelming and you can't can't get there fast enough. And for me, when I could focus on the good that was happening right now and turn off the logical brain that was saying, do more, be more, get more, get there faster. And I could just get really present with what was so amazing in my life right now, that feeling could expand. So I literally had to turn off all of the logic of the world and just get connected to what was really important about me and the gift that I had to give and just focus on giving that every day. And it, it shifted something in me from the pain of feeling separate 
uh, from success and reconnected me to what was most important about my success. And that was knowing that I could help someone else break through their own barriers. I could help someone else get focused on what they needed. So I just did that every day and it started to be that flicker turned into a flame and then it turned into, you know, just having the fire in the belly again. And now you literally are an entrepreneur on fire. Yes. Boom. (laughs) See how I tied that in there? That was brilliant. (laughs) So Melanie, you've been so open and honest this entire interview, and I so commend you for that. And I want to continue to move forward because you shared a failure and just an absolute dark time in your past and also some aha moments that came from that. But I want you to share with us a story. Take us there with you. We want to be next to you when you had an actual light bulb go off in your mind at some some point during your journey, what was that moment? What did it feel like? And then what actions did you take to turn that idea, that aha moment into success? So one of the things that I realized was my demise was that I was trying to be too many things to too many people. And I think that's one of the things that we all have to face at a certain point is when we're ready to grow and scale our business and leverage our time better. Um, we, we start to see all the possibilities. And I, you know, one version of this is called bright, shiny objects. There's lots of really cool ideas out there, lots of different directions you can go. And um, what I personally had to look at was what do I want to be known for and how did I want to specialize? And so there became a time when I sat down and I looked at all the different directions I could go, all the different ideas, all the different paths, all the different products, you know, which there was a significant number of right. and, and look at streamlining and simplifying things because part of what became unsustainable, and I don't think I'm alone in this, is that um, there was a lot of different things that needed to be managed and, and fed and nurtured and marketed and converted and <laughs> made better and delivered on. And that was a lot of work. So I sat down and I did this exercise that I call my green light formula. And I've actually been teaching it for years, but I needed to do it for myself, which I think Take is, us through that right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm going to like nail this down. All right. So the, the process is looking at what was really important to me. So I made a list of my priorities. Then I made a list of the top three to five things that I value. Like what, how, what did I base my success on and how did I know that my values were being met? And then I looked at what makes me feel alive and excited. Like, what am I really passionate about? And I created a formula that I now call my thrive formula. And then I started to look at now what's viable. And so I, I outlined things like what, you know, how much energy do I have to give to a project? How much time do I want to work? Um, how many resources do I have? So resources being like, what kind of team members do I have? What kind of financial flow can I dedicate to an opportunity or an idea? I looked at um, things like what – if I say yes to a certain opportunity, will this actually feed future financial success for me? So is it a one-time deal or if I say yes to this, will it actually act as a lead generator and a nurturer of my clients? So an example of that would be if I do this webinar, is this a webinar that I can make money now and potentially generate – more leads in the future. So looking at evergreen opportunities and, you know, can I continue to leverage an, an opportunity over time? So we literally created a formula of what is going to make me feel like I'm thriving and be viable. And I ran through the different opportunities and ideas and projects that were swirling around in my head. And I started to identify which ones from a logical place, if I literally just rank them on a scale of one to five, which ones will actually make me uh, score the highest and which ones score the lowest? And it started to part all of the confusion and the chaos, and I could clearly start to see which direction made the most sense. Right. But I, I do something a little bit different with this. And you know, one of the things that I do is I, I learn to trust my instincts. I learn to trust my gut level by – Instead of just saying logically this is the right choice, then I would say like, do I get excited about this? If I'm looking at saying yes to this, does this make me feel expansive and alive and inspired or do I feel constricted, shut down and as if like, oh, that's a great idea, but I don't want to do it. Like, I don't know how to get there. And I really started to listen to that more intuitive side of me instead of just going after the logical option. And it served me really well because it's what – 
interestingly enough, I created a program from that dark time called Money DNA Mastery. And I would never have done this in a million years with the logical side because logically there's tons of money mindset programs out there. There's tons of things that teach you how to be more leveraged in your financial approach to running your business. But interestingly enough, I trusted this process. And what happened was this became one of my best all-time sellers. I have filled this program every time I ran it because – of A, the authenticity of what I teach in it, and B, because so many people that I had already been attracted to my work started to say, Melanie went through this. I've watched her go through it. She's back out on top again. I want to learn how she changed her mindset, how the belief systems and all the stuff that I teach in it. So it became an energetic match as well as a logical sequence to some of the other offerings that I have. So I literally rank every single project opportunity or idea that I had against each other and said, now what makes the most sense instead of just swirling around in my head and feeling overwhelmed. And it's just been a really great formula that I use and I teach to my clients to help the the overwhelm stop and the confusion and the chaos of which direction to go shift gears into clarity and the confidence to move forward on something. So many powerful things from that, Melanie. I mean, it's just so important for entrepreneurs to A, to be able to prioritize because you need to know where you're going to put your effort, your focus, your energy and pour yourself into because all we have is time, Melanie. All we have is time. And that's where we need to be focusing on what's going to give us the best return. And then also, you know, going forward from that, I mean, what is really resonating with you? What is your gut telling you? I mean, that is what you're going to be the most successful with because if your gut's telling you yes, if your mind telling you yes, then go for it. And then also you need to learn as an entrepreneur, especially one that's beginning to become successful, how to say no. You need to learn how to say no because there's some things that don't align with what you need to be doing and you need to be distancing yourself from those things so you can be really focusing on the things that do align with business, with the entrepreneurial venture that you're trying to create. So Melanie, what I really want to do with you right now, I want to bring you to present times because you shared with us a great journey. You shared with us the dark times. Times, what that flicker of a light looked like, how you fanned that into a flame, and then an aha moment that came out of that flame and then ended up being one of your top sellers of all times from that place in your life. Share with us now something that's exciting you right now, today, present times. So something that's exciting, me, exciting for me right now is um, I haven't taught a program that I designed many years ago for a while, like three, it's been three years since I've taught it, but it's one of the most pivotal thing that I think every entrepreneur struggles with is learning how to build a real dream team, a team that's literally liberating you from the grind of running your business and is catapulting you forward. So I'm teaching it this fall, but one of the things I'm really doing with it, instead of just all the practical, logical systems and structures is I'm starting to add a lot more of the, the emotional and the energy part of of being a leader and being an entrepreneur who's trying to make the shift from being in the business all the time and being in the grind to really knowing how to pick the people and to actually operate with them so that you're letting them do their job so you can do what you do best. And so I had this idea and it's so fun because I'm actually creating it for myself of creating a personal liberation manual to give to the people that support you in whatever capacity. And it's, it's, ta- it's allowing you to tell people, here's what I really need to do. Here's the way I need you to operate. Here's the way I need you to show up and support me so I can be the best me I can be. And the reason why I'm so excited about it is like I've been running teams for years, but there's a difference between hiring someone and really teaching them and mentoring them on how to make you a better you. And it's elusive for a lot of people because we do things like we do the delegate and run run method where, you know, you just like drop everything on someone and you're like, we just get to go (laughs) do my thing. (laughs) And you come back three days later. Wait, you haven't done anything? (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, or you hire people that are just completely wrong for the position, but they make you feel so good. And then you can't figure out why later you're not getting any traction. So there's a lot of really, you know. Um, what I would call misinformation and bad choices that we make as entrepreneurs just because we don't know any better. So I'm really excited about that. It's a really fun program. It's a really powerful program. And I because I haven't taught it in a while and people have been, you know, the people in my current programs are like, when are you going to teach it again? When are you going to help me uh, go through this process? I'm really excited to do that this fall. 
Wow. Well, that's something we're definitely going to be linking up in the show notes, Melanie, because that's just the power of mindset and the power of creating something that allows you to leverage your time, to scale what you do and to really just continue to expound upon your capabilities. I mean, all of these things are so important for entrepreneurs to take it to the next level, to break through that self-imposed ceiling that we alluded to earlier on in this interview. And Melanie, before we move into the lightning round, we're going to thank our sponsors. Afford a what? I'm sorry. I thought you said affordable legal protection. Oh, you did say that? Then you must be talking about LegalZoom. Check this out. LegalZoom offers award-winning services developed by the best legal minds in the country. The great thing about LegalZoom is that every business or family who engages with them gets personalized attention from start to finish. Plus, LegalZoom has a service that can help with just about any kind of legal protection. That's why over 90% of LegalZoom customers would recommend the service to their family. Now that's powerful. LegalZoom is not a law firm and provides self-help services at your specific direction. But there's so much more. Now every LLC in incorporation packets includes an easy-to-use business accounting software, a $269 value for free. Be sure to enter FIRE in the referral box at checkout. Start your business, protect your family, and safeguard your assets at LegalZoom.com today. Referral code FIRE. Our other sponsor, 99designs, is your go-to for all your branding needs. Do you need a new logo for your business? What about some sleek web design? How much could you use some new flyers, brochures, infographics, Facebook pages, or banners? More than 210,000 graphic designers at 99designs are there to help you out. They'll work on projects you define with a budget you can work with. They can even create brand new pieces of apparel and new mobile apps for your brands. There's a lot that goes into starting a new business. You're consumed with paperwork, legal considerations, personnel, and day-to-day operations. Get some help with the branding and marketing from people who know their stuff. At 99designs, you choose from the best submissions for your project and give feedback until the results match your expectations. There's a 100% money-back guarantee and stellar 24-7 customer support. So why delay? Why put off your branding and marketing needs any longer? It doesn't have to be a pain. Visit 99designs.com slash fire today for a $99 power pack of services for free. That's 99designs.com slash fire. And Melly, this is a great segue to move into my favorite part of the show, which is the lightning round, because this is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind blowing answers. Okay. Sound like a plan? Sure. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I was so comfortable getting a paycheck from my company because it was a really good paycheck that I was scared to let that go and be reliant on myself to be my paycheck. I love that. I was scared to be reliant on myself to be my paycheck. I mean, that is what you're becoming as an entrepreneur. That's what you're taking on. So Melanie, what is the best advice you've ever received? I cannot remember who told this piece of advice to me, but it has been monumentally helpful for me. And that is don't focus on what you can or cannot afford today. Invest today in the business you desire for tomorrow. And what that means is that, you know, especially for newer entrepreneurs or anytime you're ready to grow, it can be scary to try and figure out how to come up with money to fuel the future success you're trying to create, whether it be a mentor, whether it be a training program or investing in a a team or any strategy, you know, and there's a real um, opportunity for us to rationalize constricting and holding back or just literally talking yourself out and say, I can figure it out on my own. But here's the truth. Oftentimes, you will make more mistakes trying to figure it out on your own than if you hire someone or you buy a system or you get you know, expert help with someone who has already done it before. The, the key is like learning how to discern who's really got the goods and who's just blowing smoke. And that's, that's a little bit of a, you know, just a learning to trust certain factors and knowing what right decisions or questions to ask. But The other thing is this, when you in your mind train yourself to focus on investing, that is very different than thinking about spending money. 
And when we think about investing in what we want, you will teach yourself, you will, your brain will literally start looking for how can I come up with the money to make this investment happen? Because you know, the investment, if you're making a good investment, it's going to be at least five or 10 times more profitable down the road. If you think about spending money or just can I afford something, the brain shuts off and says, we're done. I can't afford it. Conversation over. So when I learned to invest, first of all, I became strategic and I said, how will this make me money? When will it make me money? And what do I need to do to come up with the investment so that I can have the return two months, three months, six months, a year down the road? Well, I have no doubt that whatever mentor told you that will be emailing you because, Melanie, they listen to Entrepreneur on Fire. (laughs) I'm sure they do. (laughs) What's one specific action that listeners can take in the next 24 hours to bring them one step closer to their dreams? I think an important action everybody needs to take immediately is to stop and look at the activities that are getting your time and attention. And if they are not getting you a decent return on investment, meaning the time you're putting in isn't getting you at least 50% closer or 100%, 150% closer, you need to really evaluate why are you doing it? You either need to get off your plate, delegate it to someone else, or you need to just delete it and get it off your plate. And I think everyone in the next 24 hours, if you just focused on what are you really doing that's getting you closer to your goals and your dreams, and if it's not working, make the decision to get rid of it or delete or delegate it to someone else. Melanie, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? One of the things I have every client put into effect, and I think everyone should have this, is an online calendar tool. I think it saves a million hours and it, it's just, you know, saves a lot of sanity of trying to go back and forth and it's a great way to leverage your time. So there's a couple out there. I use something called genbook.com. It's just something I've used for a long time. But another one that's really popular is Time Trade. And I think they're great tools and they're a must have if you have client appointments that you schedule. Could not agree more. It was a game changer for me when I found Schedule Once. And that's how we booked this interview, Melanie. How do you think that worked out? Well, honestly, I had my assistant do it. (laughs) Delegate, (laughs) baby. (laughs) I'm sure she loved it. She loved it. (laughs) And Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to eofire.com slash Melanie Benson Strick. Melanie, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? I looked at my bookshelf and there is a thousand books in that bookshelf and I thought, I want to pick something that not everybody else is talking about because there's a lot of obvious choices. And the one that I loved because it made me think differently is by Richard Branson called Business Stripped Bear, Adventures of a Global Entrepreneur. And I like to read things that make me think differently. And one of the cool things he talks about in there is how he scales so many different ideas. Like you would think of Richard Branson, he's like, he's a wild man, Right? He's like the quintessential entrepreneur yeah. with a million things going on. Like, how does he pull it all off? I highly suggest you read the book to find out because when you do, you're going you're gonna to come back over here and you're going to say, okay, now how do I build that dream team that Richard Branson has? He talks about some great, great learnings he's had along the way. Love that. First time recommended on Entrepreneur Woo-hoo. on Fire, episode number 333, Melanie. And Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book or any book for free at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. So, Melanie, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Okay. Well, I have my funny response. Okay. Go for that one first. (laughs) My funny response is like nothing. I'm going to an island and I'm just going to check out (laughs) because it's it's like I was reading this and I'm thinking, wow, okay, brand new place. I'm just going to go check out the beach. Nobody knows you. Nobody can call you lazy. Your food and shelter is taken care of. Exactly. But the more serious answer is because that wouldn't last very long for me. I'd I'd get antsy and I'd really want to be out there making a difference and having an impact. So that would last three days. So now you have four days left. (laughs) It probably lasts two days. Um, So I think I would go out and assuming we have social media in this. Identical to Earth. Yeah. I would go out and I would set up a Facebook, LinkedIn and Google Plus page. 
And then I would go and I would start following people and connecting with people in those formats that seem to be movers and shakers and in influencers in the area that, that I'm in, involved in. And I would start tracking them. I'd see what kind of events they're going to over the next few days and what kinds of things are they involved in. And I'd probably go buy a burner phone, you know, something really cheap, get 50 bucks, 100 bucks of it into a phone. And I'd start reaching out to them and, you know, building some contacts. I'd find out where they're going and book myself at these events, uh, show up at some of the networking things they're doing. And my goal in those first seven days would be to meet 10 to 20 people who are movers and shakers that are either experiencing or creating the problem that I solve. And I say creating because many of these people through the advice, expertise, and you know, products that they sell, they're actually creating overwhelm and challenges that I you know, can fix for you know, their clients. And my whole goal in those first seven days would be to align with and build relationships and connections with the people that over those first 30 days I could start um, – creating workshops and strategies to partner with them. Melanie, I hope Fire Nation is taking notes because, man, this entire interview has been chock full of some incredibly actionable advice. And guess what? You spoke of Evergreen. That's the beauty of podcasts. This is Evergreen, baby. You can go back, listen again, listen a third time. A year from now, there's going to be somebody that finds Entrepreneur on Fire for the first time. They're going to go back and, and download episode 333 because they like your smiling face on the show notes page and they're going to get a nice treat. So Melanie, thank you for sharing your journey and give Fire Nation, just one parting piece of guidance. Share the best way that we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. Well, I have some great free resources on my website at successconnections.com and I highly recommend you go get a copy of the 15 commonly untapped strategies for exponential impact and revenues. You know, I think one of the things that many of us don't do is we don't leverage what we already have. We're so busy running around creating new stuff and feeding the the creativity monster inside of us because we all have that desire. Cookie, to, cookie, cookie. Yes, exactly. More stuff. I need to get more stuff out. But really learning to harness and channel that energy and maximize everything you've already worked so hard to put out there. It's what I have found has you know, turned six figures into seven figures over and over and over again for myself and the clients that I work with. So I think it'll be a really great resource for you. And it's free. And it's free. Melanie, wow. Well, listen, Fire Nation is well aware. They can find the links to everything that we've talked about, the book, the resources, your contact information, eofire.com. Click on that podcast tab. You're hanging out in the archives. And thank you, Melanie, for being so generous with your time, your expertise and experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. How do I create a podcast? How do I grow my audience? How do I get great guests? How do I monetize? All these questions and more are answered at podcastersparadise.com. For one price, you will unlock the gate to access all the wonders of Podcasters Paradise. The video tutorials, the forum of fellow podcasters, the private webinars with today's top experts, and more. What are you waiting for? Head on over to podcastersparadise.com today. Thank you so much for joining us today on Entrepreneur on Fire. Head on over to eofire.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your entrepreneurial journey awaits, so prepare to ignite.